probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. In, in the normal order of things, when you invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectations that one would use it. Uh, on the other hand, the real world intervenes from time to time, and you reach in there and take something out that is still in a developmental stage, and you might use it. So it, the ans I, it's not, your question is not answerable. It, is, it, is, uh, it depends on what happens in the future and how, how well things move along the track and whether or not someone feels it's appropriate to reach into a development stage and see if something might be useful, as was the case with the unmanned aerial vehicles. But you sound like you're willing to experiment with that. I, I think that's the point. And I think and it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things, if there are new things available, and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight even before they've been fully wrung out. And I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high-powered microwave, uh, but, but sure. And yes. we will continue to do that. But what is meant by direct energy microwave weapons? We went to ask ex-colonel John Alexander, former program director in one of the most important military research laboratories in the U.S., Los Alamos National Laboratory. The research and certainly the concepts for uh, direct energy weapons go back many decades. Uh, what is happening is that the technology has now advanced sufficiently that we're starting to see the weapons come into fruition. In other words, they're becoming real. There are several types of directed energy weapons, and basically what they do is they're known as speed of light because they shoot electrons very fast over very long distances. Uh, lasers, of course, are in the light range. Uh, then there's microwave weapons that are operating at other frequencies. But basically, they're beam weapons uh, in which nothing phys physical goes out. The electrons move, but the, the kinetic weapons you talk about, you're shooting big bullets to go out and physically hit and destroy something. These work because the energy is deposed on the target and causes some effect. These images document one of the TEL tests. TEL stands for Tactical High Energy Laser. In the sequence, you can see the laser beam hit and destroy missiles and mortar rounds as they are about to hit the objective. In this other test, we see the laser beam identify and destroy two missiles at the same time. They don't make any noise and they are invisible. Some are visible, some are, you know, just outside. You have you know, in the infrared range. What's emerging now are weapon, laser weapons, where the effect is that of the laser. And they can be hole burners, what we call very high energy laser, because with the concentrated energy, uh, you can literally drill holes, you know, in, in a target. Former Pentagon analyst William Arkin, who presently works as a journalist for the Washington Post, also confirms this revolutionary change from kinetic weapons to energy weapons. For thousands of years, the way in which you've killed someone is you have hit them with a sword, a spear, an arrow, a bullet, a bomb. It's kinetic. You're killing them by hitting them. And now, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have a completely new physical principle being applied in killing people in which they don't know that they're being killed because their skin and body is being heated by high-power microwaves or they are being shot at by a laser which would have an instantaneous effect. There are other types of weapons made with lasers, such as the device we can see in the sequence. The target is not hit by a projectile, but rather by an impulse of energy that manages to bore through the armor of a tank. Apart from acoustic weapons, so far the only sign of the use of energy weapons in a war scenario is a laser device known as Zeus. According to official Pentagon sources, 
military vehicles equipped with this laser device have been used in Afghanistan to explode mines or IEDs. According to two reliable military information sites, Defense Tech and Defense Daily, at least three such vehicles are being used in Iraq as well, and some people report having seen them. When you showed me the pictures of what you described that is a laser weapon, it reminds me that I was uh, with American soldiers talking on, uh, in August 2003 and there was some kind of box on their tank with a blue light like this. I recall that very well, not because of the soldiers told me what it was used for, but because I was teasing a translator by telling, which was a female Iraqi translator, by telling, look, this is some kind of thing where they can look through and see somebody without clothes. That's why I remind it that this kind of thing I have seen for sure on that tank. William Arkin is one of the American experts who follows the Pentagon activity most closely. So what does Arkin think about the possibility of the use of uh, direct energy weapons in battle in Iraq? I can imagine uh, that, uh, that uh, there could be some what we call black use of these weapons but not in any significant way and certainly not in such a way uh, that one would uh, conclude that they've had any impact. But let's look at the Pentagon budget figures to see how important the outlay is for direct energy weapons. So right now you have about 50 million dollars a year being spent on non-lethal weapons you have about another 200 million or so being spent on uh, high power microwave uh, active denial type systems you've got probably another 100 to 200 million being spent on uh, secret black laser programs and then you've got the big lasers the, the, the high energy laser of the Air Force and the other tactical lasers so probably well, when you add all of that up, you know, the United States is probably spending a half of a billion dollars a year right now on, uh, on uh, uh, directed energy weapons, you know, probably somewhere in the order of, uh, of uh, uh, 300, 400 million euros. So this is a significant amount of money. This is the size of the defense budgets of some countries in Europe. People might think that energy weapons only pose a danger for the countries involved in a military